All right, it is time for the behind the scenes weather model discussion for Wednesday, November the 16th. How's it going everyone? William Cole here in the storm studio and uh, I've been doing a little behind the scenes work today, right? So I'm not really dressed up or anything, but I did want to jump on here and again, do one of these with you. Of course, this is our behind the scenes look at how we're putting together the daily forecast. This is where we use the raw data and not necessarily the pretty TV graphics, right? We typically put this on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, on our YouTube. YouTube as well. Uh, so again, if you're seeing it on one of those platforms, be sure to give us a like and again, also leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from as well. Also want to give a big thank you to our Patreon subscribers, helping to make a video like this possible, this kind of bonus content, if you will, also helping to support our mobile app and our channel as well. Uh, again, if you haven't signed up on our Patreon, think about doing that today. It's only $2.99 per month. And again, like I mentioned, it helps to support this, but again, also our app, also our channel, and again, everything else that we're doing as well. But again, a big thank you out there to our Patreon subscribers as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. I know there's been a lot of chatter on social media about some snow on Friday night into Saturday. Uh, we'll take a look at that. You may not like my answer. And then what about a wet Thanksgiving Thursday? Um, new data on that that just came in we're going to look at it uh, but first of all let's take a look at our live cam here this is at downtown dallas and again you see a little bit of high level cloud cover out there it's been kind of a filtered sunshine look as we've gone through the afternoon but definitely the sun has returned yesterday was cloudy and cold um, temperatures out there still on the cooler side for sure just looking around the region uh, a lot of 50s some 40s out there from the permian basin up into our texas panhandle and in fact even up towards wichita kansas 37 and even back over towards Missouri and the Ozarks over around Springfield, currently 36. Uh, just a quick peek at uh, temperatures here in North Texas as well, generally 50s. Again, like I mentioned, um, a few locations a little milder. In fact, down around Corsicana 55, out around Breckenridge 55. We still have a northerly wind coming in and that wind is putting just a bit of an edge on the temperatures. So again, wind chill factors out there generally in the lower 50s. There's just a quick peek at the wind. It is a northwesterly wind coming in, but again, you can see wind speed zero to right around five miles per hour, right? So wind truly not a real big deal as we've uh, gone through the day. Um, okay, so let's go and switch over to the raw data. This is what it's all about. So we're gonna leave the pretty TV graphics now in the dust, and we're gonna get into the real stuff here, right? So first of all, we're just gonna look at the visible satellite review. And again, basically it's showing what we saw there on the live cam, right? You can see a little bit of that high level cloud cover streaking through the area. Otherwise around the region, it's generally sunny. The only real exception to that is down along our coast. It's cloudy and it is cool down there. Uh, like you saw, even down around Brownsville, even down around Padre, temperatures currently um, are only right around 50. But again, elsewhere, again, it is a pretty quiet day uh, in the uh, in the southern plains. I always show this. If this is your first time to watch one of these, it's kind of cool. But as you look over here in the Rocky Mountains, the area of white that's not moving, by the way, that is snow on the ground. You can also see a little area of melting snow in southwestern Kansas into our far northwestern Texas panhandle. See that area of white? It's getting dimmer as we go through the day. That's the snow melting, but that's actually snow on the ground uh, just from two days ago um, out there. So interesting what you can see again, as you look down from space in real time. And that's what the visible satellite is, right? It's not necessarily processed imagery. It's really just looking down. I mean, it is processed to a certain extent, obviously, but um, it's, it's technically, theoretically, uh, more in the way of just kind of like a live look down, right? Um, okay, so let's go and take a look at the overall pattern we're in. This is where we really like to start. This is kind of the meat and potatoes, the setup of the entire forecast. We're looking for dips, storm troughs, active weather, cooler weather, or we're looking for ridges in the jet stream, which means quieter weather and typically milder weather. Well, take a look at what we have across a good part of the nation, right? We've got a big storm trough, and that big storm trough even does extend down into parts of the southern plains. That's why it's cool, right? And in fact, actually off the coast, we have a cold front, the cold front that came through just a couple days ago. It's now in the Atlantic. It's all the way on the Gulf of Mexico. And again, behind it, uh, that's where essentially we've got all the cooler weather. Now, if you look carefully off the west coast, you can see a little bit of a ridge. And believe it or not, that ridge, uh, this is in about seven or eight days on down the road. It's going to try and meander a little bit further to the east. And I know I've heard several people in town talking about a really cold Thanksgiving. 
I don't necessarily see that, and I'm, I'm going to show you why. I'm not, I'm not totally sure what data they've been looking at, uh, but it's not showing up in the data we use here. Uh, in fact, Thanksgiving looks a little, temperatures are still below normal, but I mean, we should be, the way it looks now, in the 60s for your Thanksgiving, okay? Uh, more on that again coming up. Uh, but let's also just take a look around the nation here quickly as well. This is just a convective outlook. And again, just from the Storm Prediction Center, this time of year you can still get uh, quite a bit of thunderstorm activity, especially in the deep south, right? Uh, but again, with that front that's currently off the coast, we have nothing but chilly weather behind it, so everything is stable. So no thunderstorms in the forecast today. No thunderstorms around the nation in the forecast for tomorrow. And in fact, on day three, this will be Friday, you have to look all the way up along the uh, coast there of uh, western New York, northwestern PA, uh, up in the Great Lakes area there. There could be an opportunity of some general thunder, right? Not even severe weather with that. So we do watch that, though, even though we go through the fall, even though we go through the winter, um, even here in North Texas in January, right? When do we typically get our first severe weather deal of the new year it's typically in january i mean severe weather season doesn't truly begin until march but we normally get you know a setup or something happens in january as well so you always have to be vigilant right we're always looking at that uh, severe weather outlook okay so now let's go ahead and truly jump into it right this is what it's all about this is truly what we like to look at here this is the model data and i'm going to walk you through the next several days because we've got a lot going on right coming out of summer Typically the pattern not very active, early fall normally not too active, but right about now, just on schedule, from now all the way through our severe weather season, the pattern is typically pretty active, right? So let's go and look at this pretty carefully. So number one, this is the upper air chart that we looked at earlier but this is gonna take us out over 10 days, right? What we looked at earlier uh, was real time, what's currently going on, right? Uh, so we're still seeing the same storm trough here. We're gonna be watching that pull away, but for this upcoming Friday into Saturday, we're gonna be watching another little system come in that's gonna pull our next cold front in, and the next cold front, it's an Arctic front. It's gonna be a modified Arctic air front. Uh, so let's look at this carefully. There goes the dip, number one. The, the colors in that is an area of spin, vorticity, uh, so associated with that, right? So that begins to pull away. And again, here comes, you can just vaguely see it. Here comes our next little weather maker showing up. And again, that's gonna be our cold front for early Friday morning. The way it looks now, coming through the Metroplex at maybe like 5 a.m. in the morning, and then turning a sharply colder Friday into Saturday. So we're watching that system. It begins to pull away. And again, for Sunday into Monday, temperatures will begin to moderate back into the 50s. I'll show you the actual numbers coming up. But then take a look at this. For Monday, take a look out to the west. You can see a weather maker coming in. Okay, so there's Monday we've got a storm system coming in. And then we'll go forward in time. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, that's a bigger storm system. That would be your Thanksgiving right there. Okay, so we've got three systems we're watching. Okay, and then as we go forward in time, by the end of this, this would be by about day 10, we may be watching another trough developing off to our north, right? So this is global data. This is the Euro model we're looking at, right? It goes out about 10 days. And again, so over the next 10 days, truly three systems we're gonna be watching. Okay, let's put air mass change with that, right? So now at 850 millibars, this is just off the surface. Again, we'll look at the actual forecast numbers coming up, but what we're looking at now, we're visualizing air mass movements, right? Anything we could be concerned about, okay? So again, we're starting basically right now. And again, you can see that big trough, right? Inside that trough we were talking about, look at all that dark blue, right? That's cold Canadian modified Arctic air across really a good part of the nation. You can see most of the nation outside of the Florida Peninsula, it's chilly. That's why there was no opportunity of severe weather or convective weather, no thunderstorms. It's cold and it's stable, right? Okay, so let's go forward in time. So that air mass begins to pull off, but look at what comes speeding out of Canada. Look at that through the Northern Plains. There it is, Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. There comes our next front. You see how fast it's moving. I mean, it's just speeding through the plains. So it's coming down for Friday morning. It'll arrive here in North Texas. Again, it'll be modified Arctic air when it gets here. It'll be shallow, meaning it's, it's I mean, vertically wise, it'll just be a shallow air mass. Those are typically in and out fairly quickly. So Friday, Saturday, we'll get chillier. And then Sunday, we'll even begin to rebound the temperatures, right? So we'll go forward in time. We begin to modify the air mass. 
and then take a look at this. So then going forward in time, we have two more systems, but look at what happens. Most of the cold air pulls off to the north. So even though we have two more systems coming in, and they're truly coming in from the Pacific anyway, they're not tapping any cold air. So what's that telling us? There's going to be a bit of a moderating trend. We're not necessarily going to get back above normal, but as we head into Thanksgiving, we have two systems coming in, and again, things are looking milder. Okay, now towards the end of this, towards the end of this, you're going to see the chilly air begin to pool again, and we have a new storm trough developing, and I think in about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days, and maybe longer than that, we're going to get another big push of chilly air down, right? So we'll begin to moderate the temperature some. I think technically we're still right below average where we should be, but we're not going to be in the 40s other than this upcoming Friday and Saturday, right? We begin to rebound the temperature some. We have two opportunities of rain outside of that, but it's rain because temperatures will be milder. Again, we'll put the numbers with this coming up. Um, if you like the less cold temperatures, you're going to like that part of the forecast. But then after that, the end of November, into December, it could be turning pretty pretty chilly again, right? Kind of a similar pattern to what we've been in. Uh, so we'll see, right? The data ends, but right there at day 10, I mean, we're seeing a cold front accelerating southbound towards us, a new storm trough developing, and the way it looks, we've got more chilly air, again, in about 11 or 12 days uh, on down the road. So if you remember the last couple winters, I mean, they've been relatively mild. November, December has really been no big deal. For us, it's, it's mainly just been a couple weeks in February that has been just so chilly. But uh, again, this year is different. I mean, every year is different, obviously, uh, but the last couple have been milder. This one, again, is starting off cooler. So again, if you like the chillier weather, you'll like this. If you don't, um, you may not be enjoying this. Okay, now from there, let's talk precip. And then we're going to look at the high res data after this. Then we'll put the numbers with the forecast. We'll pull all of this together, right? We're just looking at all the different components, and then we'll tie it all together, and we'll come up with the final forecast. Um, but let's look at precip. Again, this is from the Euro, first of all here. And as we go forward in time, again, the first thing we're going to watch for, this is what everyone on social media has been talking about, right? I've seen this all day. Boom. It's Friday night and it's Saturday. You're seeing the blue. But the thing we have to remember, number one, this is a global model, right? It's forecasting for DFW, the same as it's forecasting for London, England, for Kiev, Ukraine, for Antarctica, right? I mean, it's just, it's forecasting for the entire globe. The Euro, the resolution is a little bit better than some of the global models, but again, it, this, this is not giving us a future radar product, right? This is a snapshot of a six hour window. When you see the, the blues or the greens, whatever the color is, it's a six hour snapshot saying, hey, I think there might be some precip showing up here. It's giving us a signal, right? And so as we forecast out for 10, or in my case, 12 days, we use those signals, keep typically pretty low precip probabilities as we go out in time. And then as we get closer in time, right, the 60 hour window where we start getting the high res data in, that's when we can really fine tune those forecasts, right? Because then we can use the future radar depictions and get a better idea of what may be showing up, okay? So I'm saying all of that, kind of long-winded, but the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of folks saw that, you know, maybe on Pivotal Weather, wherever they're getting their, their Euro model from, their Euro data from, and they're thinking, oh, we're about to get some snow in North Texas. This kind of came out of nowhere. We've got the Arctic front coming through. Now we're going to get some snow. This is maybe a big deal, right? Okay, so we see that. You, know, you kind of think that maybe, uh, but let's go ahead. We're going to pause it right there before we even go any further and talk about Thanksgiving or even the Friday uh, or the Monday rather opportunity of rain. Let's drill down further. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the 3K NAM. This is the high res data just beginning to come in within range. If you watch this little segment here, we do very often, you know I don't like the 3K NAM. The only exception is winter weather. The 3K NAM and wintry type weather it's good, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, we don't, we don't even have a full snapshot yet, right? Because we're just on the fringes, right, of where we can use the high-res data. But let's go and at least take a look as far as we can, okay? Here we go. So we're, get, we're, we're just kind of speeding out through time here. Here's Friday afternoon. We're getting into Saturday. And this will stop at right around 1 a.m. Saturday morning, okay? Um, what we're seeing, and again, this is more of a future radar depiction. We are seeing an opportunity of maybe a few snow showers 
out to the west, right, kind of out in the big country. Uh, the snapshot from the euro was basically saying overnight Saturday, or overnight Friday, I'm sorry, in a very early Saturday morning, around 7 a.m. Saturday morning, somewhere in there, uh, there could be some snowflakes, right? Or the euro was maybe saying even more than that. We're seeing maybe the opportunity, right, again, out in the big country, maybe showing an opportunity of something trying to happen out there. Uh, but, I mean, truly in the Metroplex, in our forecast area, because we go all the way out to Young County, all the way out to Stevens County, I mean, it's just... It's not necessarily there, right? It's further to the west. Now, keep in mind, this stops at 1 a.m. Uh, we have truly until about 7 a.m. or maybe even a little bit longer that we truly need to look into. But right now, the data is not necessarily matching, right? The high res does not necessarily match the signals, the broad signals we were getting from the euro, right? So I've still got a 20% opportunity early Saturday morning. We'll wait for the rest of the high res data to come within range, uh, but unless there's... Uh, a drastic change showing up here on the high res data right now not necessarily looking like a big deal but with winter weather the one thing we always have to keep in mind a couple degrees especially here in north texas can change everything severe weather we can normally lock it in right we know when there's severe weather on the way we normally refine the forecast a little bit that day that morning early that morning right uh, but we can pretty much tell you you know out a couple days hey it's a tornado day. Hey, it's a hell day. It's a wind day. You know, we kind of know what's going on. Winter weather in the Southern Plains, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, it's a completely different ball game, right? It's a little more, I hate to say unpredictable. We know the general setup, but the forecast typically evolves quite a bit with wintry weather. Not saying that's going to happen with this, but in the back of our mind, it's something to at least keep an eye on, right? Going forward in time. The one other thing to watch here as well, is you see even an opportunity of some frozen precipitation uh, out across the Permian Basin, right? This time of year, the one thing, especially early in the season, you're always watching for frozen anything, right? And I mean, truly here in North Texas, we get frozen, you know, freezing rain, freezing drizzle more times than snow anyway. So it's something to keep our eye on. Let's take just a quick peek here, right, um, at uh, the opportunity of what we're going to look at here is just the humidity, right? A lot of times when we're dealing with moisture values, what we'll look at is the dew point, right? With severe weather, we kind of use the dew point number. The actual dew point number is an indicator for certain things. When you're dealing with wintry weather, because your, your surface temperature varies, right? It could be dropping and your dew point number is truly what we're trying to figure out. Do we have any moisture to work with? You use the percentage because, again, in the spring, you kind of know, eh, we're going to be in the 70s, we're going to be in the 80s. You know, we get a dew point number in the upper 60s. Eh, we know we're moist, right? But in the winter, I mean, your temperature number is quite a bit more variable, so the humidity is kind of a better indicator, if that makes sense. So humidity more so in the fall and winter, dew point in the spring, okay, for severe weather even though they're, they're both, again, your humidity is based off the temperature and the dew point and the difference between the two. Um, but let me go and take a look at this. So just kind of a long story there for a simple point, but let's go and take a look here. And again, all we're looking for is just the opportunity, maybe a little bit of drizzle opportunity with the front. But at the surface behind this front, as is typical, right, as is typical with Arctic or modified Arctic fronts, a lot of times are pretty dry, right? So we've got a pretty dry air mass coming in. The exception to that is take a look out to the west. Take a look out there. So where we're getting that little signal on the uh, on the future radar there, maybe some frozen drizzle, maybe a little bit of frozen something out there. Well, look how much more humid it is, right? They could have a little bit of freezing drizzle out there. Uh, here, we've got a very dry air mass coming in. It's going to turn chillier. And again, it's just, again, you know, I mean, if you've lived in North Texas, you know, a lot of times when we get these cold air masses down, it's just dry, right? I mean, you kind of get the static electricity, you know, things like that. It's going to be kind of similar to that. So again, truly even the moisture, and this is only looking at the surface, by the way, uh, is going to be a little bit further out there to the west. So uh, even though folks really got worked up about that little snippet there of um, an opportunity of frozen precip, again, as we truly dive into it, we look at the high res data, again, there, there's still a few hours we're missing. We're going to have to wait for the rest of the data to come in later today and even into parts of tomorrow to truly refine it as we're just kind of giving my opinion on it. I'm not too worked up about it, right? I mean, maybe out to the west something, but right now here, I, I don't really necessarily see it. I put a 20% probability, like I mentioned, in my 12 day. It's kind of like a placeholder, right? And let's watch it, let's see if something happens. The data right now, not necessarily, um, not necessarily um, indicating it, right? 
But again, it's just it's one of those things, right? Whenever you see stuff on social media, and I'm definitely not the social media police. I, I think you can post whatever on social media. I mean, I'm not one of those people at all as far as weather-related stuff goes, obviously. But when you see it, just in the back of your mind, whenever somebody has that global model and they're giving you that snapshot and, you know, it's almost kind of like clickbait type stuff, you know, don't get too worked up on it. But I just, for whatever reason, I just saw it everywhere uh, this morning. And uh, like I said, it was, it was truly one of the first things that I kind of de dove into uh, when we were looking at the data earlier. Um, okay, so from there, let's pick up where we left off. Now we're switching back over to a global model, back over to the Euro. And again, we're gonna take you out through the next 10 days because we have two more precip opportunities we need to talk about, right? Uh, so we're leaving, we're leaving this Friday and Saturday. Again, that right there, what got everyone's attention. Eh, kind of looking like a swing and a miss. We'll watch it though. Uh, let's go forward, right? So that system leaves. And then we have another system on Monday. Now there's a bit of a change for this system, right? You saw it swing out. Remember when we were looking at the upper air chart? This one, the Euro, is now giving us some signals of maybe some precipitation, right? Earlier, talking about earlier this morning and even yesterday, there was not much of a signal for precip. So this is a change now that it's saying, hey, we could have some showers now on Monday as that system moves through. So I put a 20% probability in, right? It's not, you know, we, we don't have the consistency, right? This is really the first run of the model that it's beginning to show showers, right? If it shows it tomorrow morning, if it shows it tomorrow afternoon, then we say, hey, you know what? It's pretty consistent. We better start bumping up the rain chances. We're probably gonna have something on Monday, right? But now, since this is the first time it's showing it, for all we know, tomorrow it could be gone. Tomorrow morning it could be long gone, right? So that's why you don't jump your rain probabilities up. I mean, this maybe looks, I mean, just from looking at this, you could say, hey, you know, maybe that's a 40% opportunity, but you put a 40% in today that's gone tomorrow, and then you take it out and people look at your forecast, you're like, they're like, well, what's going on? This thing is, you know, there's a lot going on with this. So anyway, so you look at it, it it's just called continuity, right? You're just looking for a consistency in the model. And uh, right now we're not necessarily getting that for Monday, right? So we'll call that a 20% opportunity and we'll watch it. That system swings out. Okay, more importantly, Wednesday into Thursday. Now, here's the change on this one. It looks drier. Where again, earlier in the day and even yesterday, it looked pretty wet, right? For Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday, obviously, Thanksgiving. This run is now everything well off to the east. Same thing. You don't want to buy into that too much, right? If you have a, a rain probability, you don't want to say, oh, well, now it's zero or now it's 10, right? You don't want to make the, the, those super... Um, those super, th those big changes, in other words, too quickly, right? Because this is the first run that, again, it's taking out the precip. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the run from this morning, right? So earlier today, this is what it was showing. Well, it looks like a pretty big rain deal, right? I mean, that would be a washed out Thanksgiving. For a lot of folks, you're not going to be outdoors at all. You know, it looks pretty wet, right? So that's what it was showing earlier to now this. And again, this time of year, even through the spring, you're, we get drastic changes in the model data. You know, every 12 hours it flip-flops. Every 12 hours you get new global data in. Every six hours you get a new run. It reanalyzes the old run where you can get some small changes. The six hour in between runs I really don't buy into at all, uh, but it's truly those 12 hour runs, right? So we're getting some flip-flop on this. I mean, we'll watch it and see. I've still got a rain probability for Wednesday and Thursday for all we know. Again, tomorrow morning it could be completely flipped back. It's just something to watch for right now. But again, the big thing with Thanksgiving, like we saw there, I don't necessarily see Thanksgiving being chilly. And I know there's been, uh, there's been at least one person in town. I mean, it's, uh, everyone can make their own forecast, obviously, um, but I don't see it. And none of, none of the data really sees that either. Uh, what we're looking at here is the blend of models. And this is where we're going to put the um, actual numbers with everything we've talked about. Now we're tying it all together, right? And again, this is what we call the blend of models. This is the Euro, the GFS, a couple other models, the high res data. It's all plugged together from the National Weather Service. It's weighted and these numbers are spit out, right? And this is truly what I base my 12 day off of. Um, truly what I base it off of as far as the numbers go with a few tweaks from what I'm seeing in the Euro, right? Sometimes this doesn't totally match the trend of the Euro. So sometimes there's a few tweaks associated with it. But I can tell you today, I, I'm pretty much using what it has. I mean, I really, I mean, it was pretty much what the Euro had. Um, so tonight down to right around 33, 34. Again, we still have not had that first freeze officially at DFW. We're watching for that. We'll probably have it uh, as we head into the weekend. Tomorrow, 58, uh, pretty similar to today. Cold front comes through early Friday morning, comes through about uh, four, five, six in the morning. Friday looks chilly, highs only in the 40s. We may be struggling 
to make that 49, okay? Uh, Saturday starts off pretty cold. I don't think it's impossible. We don't have a freeze Saturday morning officially at DFW. It's a pretty chilly air mass. Right now that's got 33. I think we'll be between 30 and 33 at DFW, okay? Saturday looks cold. Highs only in the 40s, right? Uh, we then begin to pull out as we get into Sunday, a touch milder, right? You, you don't really say warmer this time of year. It's milder, right? Still below normal. Here's our Monday looking mild, but rain. So with the rain, the temperatures are maybe held down, right? The, when you factor that in, this is showing 50. I mean, if it truly, we get the rain in the showers like it was showing on there, it's not impossible the temperatures are held down into the 40s, not even because there's a big front or anything, just because it's cloudy and rainy, that temperature may be a little more variable. You may see that dip into the 40s if that rain probability begins to look more likely. Only for the fact clouds and rain, the temperature won't move. So that the rain chance though is not locked in. So right now we'll still call it right around 50. Here we go heading into Thanksgiving. I mean, again, I see milder temperatures. I mean, back into the 60s compared to where we have been, it's milder, right? We've been in the 50s, some 40s. I mean, it's been pretty chilly lately. Uh, now there may be some rain and very similar to Wednesday and Thursday. If there's a little bit of rain around, um, those temperatures could be held down just some, right? But in the grand scheme of things, it does look milder. And then like you saw there on the data, it could be closer to that Black Friday. There may be another front in the area. The blend may be a little warm there, but if not, again, truly it appears as though we're going to have another pretty big pattern change, right? So out about 10, 11, 12 days, as you talk about again, a little bit further out here, I think we turn chilly again, and we could even be chillier than where we've been as we head into the summer, right? So that's what the latest data there was showing. It's been pretty consistent that again, we kind of become a little milder, a little less cold, and then we enjoy that a couple rain chances. And then it looks like things really begin to bottom back out as we head into the first part of December. That would be truly the very end of November, right around December the 1st. Um, again, when that next um, chillier pattern appears to be um, building in. So, so that's what we've been analyzing through the day, folks. I mean, like I mentioned, you know, take as we do these, again, take these with a little bit of a grain of salt, right? It's always a little bit different than what we present on the air uh, because, again, what we present on the air is a consistency forecast, right? We're not, we don't dive into all these little details. Uh, we're not showing you that, hey, well, the, the data is evolving on these rain chances. We pretty much just give you kind of what we have and what we've been going with. Uh, but this is where we can take a closer inspection, right? Uh, just because that rain probability again came up on Monday doesn't mean it's still going to be there tomorrow so again as you're making plans keep all of that in mind I mean truly use my 12 day that I put together that's that's the real information that we put out but um, again this time of year as we go through winter all the way through spring the pattern here is interesting we will have a lot going on it gets a little boring in summer we may not have as much to talk about in the summer uh, but really as we go through fall winter and spring uh, the forecast evolves quite a bit and it's truly interesting again just to see the dynamic behind it and what may or way but what may not happen uh, again just as the data continues to unfold so again hopefully you find these interesting like i mentioned we try and do these daily with you just as a bonus content again if you have not downloaded our free mobile app by the way that is where our true forecasts are, my 12-day forecast, live radar, breaking weather alerts, all that kind of fun stuff. Of course, our live channel is on there. Our live channel is also on Roku, Apple, Amazon, Fire TV. It's also on YouTube as well. Uh, so any of those platforms, of course, feel free to number one, download the mobile app. And again, number two, add our live channel uh, to that as well. Uh, otherwise, again, one more time, want to say thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Again, if that is you, again, making this bonus content available, helping to support the mobile app and the channel as well. Uh, again, if you haven't done that, again, feel free to keep in mind you can sign up. It's only $2.99 per month. And again, it's at patreon.com slash weather tracker TV. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And again, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.